30 loss. Hey, where's this instruction that say 30 horsepower? What's going on, guys? Today we got a Science Channel McFarland episode for you. But before we get to the action, I don't think so. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Photo Mike's Garage. Okay, today we're going to talk about how Cletus McFarland from the Cletus McFarlane YouTube channel is wrong about electric superchargers. And I'm gonna tell you why, but first I wanna show you what I have under the hood right here. Okay everybody, this is my 2013 Scion FRS. This is a small sporty uh, two-door coupe. Uh, it's got a four-cylinder engine, a two-liter uh, flat uh, four made by Subaru and uh, attached to that, as you can see right here, is something that looks like a turbo. Okay, and also if you watch some of my earlier videos, which I'll put a link down below, you can see that I've actually talked a lot about this particular item right here. This is an electric supercharger, or if you want to call it like uh, Cletus calls it, a turbo, you can do that, but technically it's a supercharger. Uh, because it's not driven by exhaust gases, it's driven by another propulsion method. So that technically, so that technically would make it a supercharger. But for the sake of clarity, to compare it with Cletus McFarland's um, YouTube uh, recent YouTube video, we're going to call this a electric turbo. So visually, you can see that I have what appears to be a. Uh, turbo or at least part of a turbo instead of having the exhaust side of the turbo the uh, impeller we have just the compressor so we have the compressor side the cold side of the turbo but over here we have what appears to be a black cylinder this is an electric motor this is a brushless three-phase electric motor uh, it's commonly used in radio controlled uh, helicopters airplanes it produces a lot of RPM and a lot of power in a fairly small size, but it's actually a very serious brushless electric motor. That's connected by cables to a control box, and then we have a number of cables here that go over to this area. And I'm gonna show you what's underneath here. Now I'm gonna show you how the system works, and of course one of the most important things about an electric turbo is the batteries that run it. So I'm taking some of the covers off here so you can see how this works. Uh, right now what we have is the positive cable and the negative cable. On a stock battery you'd have a big battery here, positive on this side, negative on this side. So they're still in roughly the same location but as you can see when I take these covers off I've got a different situation working out here. We'll take this guy off. When we do so you'll be able to see kind of how the system works. Take the cover off and just place it right there, a little bit out of the way. Okay, so, and we'll take this cover off and these two spacer plates. Okay, so now you can see the battery system that I've got working on my car exposed. We have here an XT X30L, which is a 40 uh, crank, cold cranking amp battery but it's a small one. And this is what runs the car itself. So when you run any electrical, so when you run any electrical items inside the car, including starting the vehicle, uh, it's running off of this battery here. As you can see, there's the positive and there's the negative. And this special cover allows me to take uh, the negative and bring it over to where the old uh, terminal would have been. So that can preserve a, a relationship that was similar to what used to be where the negative was over here. And then what do we have here? We have these two very small batteries. These are ETX 16Ls. They have 325 cold cranking amps each. And these are connected. They're not connected to this battery, but they're connected together. So they're connected in series, which uh, ups the voltage from 12 and 12 to 24 or higher. So you can see we have a positive connect to the positive here, over to the negative, across to the positive, over to the negative, and that is how they're connected in series. This entire battery system is only slightly heavier than the stock big 12 volt that was in here before. So there's not much extra weight and it fits almost in the same area. There's room for quite a large battery 
bunch of batteries here in the stock location so it works really good and it's important for me to show you this because these two batteries in series produce 24 volts 24 is an important number got to remember that now my electric turbo is activated in a very simple way by a simple mechanical switch which is connected to the gas pedal okay this is the gas pedal on my Scion FRS and as you see, when I depress it, it moves a lever on a very simple mechanical switch right there. So when I'm driving, when I press down on the gas pedal at usually about 75% uh, throttle opening, uh, that's when it activates the electric turbo. There's wires that go from this control box uh, and by the way, just ignore this little sticker. That's just a joke. This is an electric turbo. It's got nothing to do with nitrous oxide. <laughs> but anyway, this is the control center of the whole system. Uh, the wires that go to the throttle switch are right here. Uh, it activates and sends power through these heavy cables from my two batteries in series straight to the electric motor. It spins this at up to 55,000 RPM. And that is enough to produce boost in the compressor wheel. And that gives you up to five PSI pressure into your motor. Now I know what you're saying, uh, turbos usually spin at a higher RPM than 55,000 RPM, often over 100,000 RPM. Uh, that is true, but remember, I'm only producing up to five PSI of boost at the max. Uh, actually lately, the most I've seen is 4.79 PSI. And that falls off as the RPMs of the motor go up to around 2 PSI. So when you first hit the, hit the switch, you're getting 5 PSI, and that tapers down to 2 PSI. That's sort of like the opposite of what a regular exhaust-driven turbo would work, where as it would spool up and spin faster and faster, it would produce more boost. So it would go from maybe 2 PSI and go up to 7 PSI on a stock motor like this. Okay, so that explains the electrical side and how I activate it. After it's activated, when the throttle is closed past 75%, this stops spinning completely. So unlike a regular exhaust-driven turbo where it's spinning all the time, and even at low RPMs, it's spinning a little bit, this one stops spinning completely. And then the batteries, which have dumped some of their energy into the electric turbo, are then recharged through this control module, it recharges these batteries from your alternator over a certain period of time. And very quickly, the voltage uh, is restored within a few seconds. So the resting voltage is around 28 volts. And that will go down to very quickly on a short burst of acceleration. That'll go down to about maybe 20 volts. And then after you're finished, the whole system is recharged. So the way to think of this is not really like an exhaust uh, driven turbo. You really can't compare them. It's more like in a comparison to a nitrous oxide system where it just gives you power when you have full throttle and then when you don't have full throttle, it's not operating at all. The advantage of that is that for regular driving, you have no extra power being added. The car drives like a stock FRS. But when you want to pass somebody on the highway, when you want to merge into a freeway on a freeway on ramp, you've got extra power. How much extra power? Well, let me tell you. This system, which is called the Phantom Electric Supercharger System, even though I'm calling it a turbo, but it is a supercharger system. But basically, this is a Phantom Electric Supercharger System, and it produces up to 45 horsepower increase and about a 35 foot-pounds of torque increase. And that's with a maximum of five PSI, and that is a very useful amount of extra power. Now, is that the same amount of power as you would get from a regular exhaust-driven turbo or a regular belt-driven supercharger? No, it's not. It's less. But you're also not paying the same price for these components as you would a regular turbo or supercharger. For this entire system, including the batteries, I paid less than $2,000. Now, I know some of you are saying that on eBay, you can find exhaust-driven turbos for under that price. But you gotta remember that 
uh, a real turbo exhaust driven turbo system requires a lot more uh, additional mods, supporting mods if you will. You've got to have an intercooler, you've got to have extra piping, you've got to have perhaps an even, maybe even an oil cooler because the exhaust driven turbo produces a lot of heat, a lot of heat. While this electrical turbo does not produce a lot of heat. The reason is because it's only on for a short period of time. It's only on as you require a burst of power and then it's not operating, not producing any heat at all. So therefore, it can be cooled by the air. You don't need an intercooler with this system. Okay, so that's how my system works, but the system that Cletus tested on his YouTube channel did not work. That was a complete failure. As you saw in the video, right here. Oh. Instructions that say 38 horsepower. I think that was for the loss, not for the gain. You gotta be kidding me! It literally lost 33 horsepower. Damn, that's a shame. Yeah, a 30 horsepower loss on that Mustang. That is a joke, and he paid $400 for that. Okay, so why am I saying that my system works while his did not? Well, let me show you. First of all, he tested his on a 4.0. 6 liter V8 motor, a lot bigger than a 2 liter motor. Uh, this is a fairly small uh, compressor wheel and it can only produce up to 5 psi on this size motor. If you attach this to a larger motor, uh, you would have even less psi because the requirements uh, of the motor would be so much more. So a more valid test would have it be tested on a smaller four-cylinder motor. Right now, these are mostly made, uh, mostly used on smaller four-cylinder engines. The other issue is the figure I gave you before, 24 volts. Uh, Cletus set his uh, cheap eBay turbo, electric turbo, set up with just the regular battery voltage of 12 volts. This thing runs on 24 volts. That makes a big difference. Uh, voltage is what can spin this up has the, the power to do so. You need higher voltages. Um, electric turbos or superchargers are being used by the OEM manufacturers such as Audi and others. And they use a 48 volt system which gives you even more power. But with 24 volts, you can get usable boost in a small motor. <clears throat> and the motor he was using, the electric motor on that cheap electric turbo. I have no idea what that was. This is a real rushless motor that is actually rather expensive and used in the radio controlled world. So I've shown you my system. I've said that it works. I've said that it produces around 40 horsepower and around 35 foot pounds of torque. But where's the proof in that? A lot of people are very skeptical and I have shown some proof in my earlier videos if you'll check them out. But something I have right here this is a phantom electric supercharger like what I have on this car uh, installed in a Scion FRS at on a dyno. Now I'm going to show you a clip backing up what I've just said. Just watch this clip and you'll see what I mean.
Okay, there it is. Proof that my system, the system I have on my 2013 Scion Alpha RS, does work, does produce horsepower, does produce torque. So the Cletus McFarland Science Channel is not really about science. It wasn't really a fair test of a real electric turbo system. In Cletus's video, uh, it's mentioned that you should never put an electric turbo on your vehicle. Uh, Cletus himself also said that electric turbos don't work. All right guys, that's another day here at the McFarland Science Channel. Today we've had a failure. The electric turbo is not the ticket. That thing will not gain you horsepower. Uh, that is just, that's not science. And that's my real bone to pick with Cletus because he should not say that. The system he bought for $400 was junk and doesn't work. And you do have to be really careful. There's fake stuff out there, but the OEMs are using it. So that means it does work. And the system I have on my car here, it does work. Now you gotta pay a bit more, $2,000. But if you do, you can get something that actually will produce boost. Anyway, to make it clear, I love Cletus McFarland. I'm a subscriber. I think you should subscribe too. His videos are awesome, fantastic. He deserves all, this, uh, all the, the success that he's getting right now. And make sure you check out his videos. But I just wish that he wouldn't say that all electric turbos are junk. He should have said that that particular one was junk. I know he's looking for one that will actually work. Um, I would send them mine, except it's the only one I have and they're not making them anymore, so I don't want to do that. But um, if he had tested something like what I have on a smaller motor, he would have shown that it actually does work and that that is the way of the future. Electricity in many ways is the way of the future. You know, the electric cars and everything else and electric turbos are the way of the future. So let's be open to new ideas, to new technology. I mean, after all, technology is going to save the world, right? So thanks for watching Photo Mike's Garage. I will see you later.